I'm Jack Cagle, and I'd like to welcome you to your Precinct 4 Parks. We have everything you need here. You want to play? We have hike and bike trails, picnic tables, and things like that for you to come and enjoy. You want to learn about our nature? We have programming here so that you can connect, understand, and expand the mind of yourself and your family. And did I mention? Your parks are a great place to play with the whole family. Come, enjoy your Precinct 4 Parks. Jesse Jones Park is a 312 acre nature preserve. It's intended to provide a place for people to get outside, enjoy being outdoors, learn about nature, learn about Texas history, and we've been doing it for almost 40 years now. In 1978, the Harris County Commissioner's Court authorized the Cypress Creek Parkway Project. That included over 4,000 acres of preserved land that would be eventually turned into recreational spaces such as Jones Park. So in 1982, Jones Park was opened and it included about five miles of trails, even at that time, the playground, the picnic area, the boardwalks, and all the natural beauty was there going forward. And then since that time, it has expanded from the 154 acres to 312 acres. So at the far western edge of Jesse Jones Park, both Spring and Cypress Creek come together and where they merge inside the park, it then becomes Spring Creek and that continues on for about another two and a half miles until it combines with the West Fork of the San Jacinto River. It's also very important that we have places like Jones Park because this natural area is a flood barrier and so what it does is when the creeks flood, they overflow into the park and the vegetation helps to slow down the flow of the water and the trees and plants absorb that water into the soil and it helps to minimize the amount of flooding that could impact homes and people. Well, I like being in nature a lot. Always maintain three points of contact in the water. It's better than being inside. We're gonna go canoeing. We do a lot of school tours and many of the children come from the inner areas of Houston and this is their first time to come to a very wooded and forested area such as Jones Park. So they're, they're very curious, they, they wonder if bears live here, they see the white sandy beaches and they ask me, we trucked in all that white sand and we get to explain this is all natural, made by God. So we have a ton of different plants and animals that are found out here in Jesse Jones Park. We're home to over 800 different species of plants, everything from small grasses and mosses and flowers all the way up to trees that are well over 100 feet tall. We've got over 220 different species of bird that have been documented in this park. Birders will come from all over the world to see this little bird, Swainson's Warbler, that's on their life list and we're one of the few places that it nests and it can be seen on a regular basis during the breeding season, nesting season. Um, we have prothonotary warblers, which are sometimes called swamp canaries. They're a bright yellow, very attractive bird that are found along the cypress ponds that we have down here. And as far as the plant life out here, we actually are home to several county champion trees, some of the more exemplary specimens. Uh, we have a county champion elm here, county champion bald cypress. Some of our adjacent properties actually house certain species of plants that are found nowhere else in Harris County. Bald cypress trees are so distinctive with the knees that they grow out to the side and they look so curious to everyone. And we have the boardwalks where they can walk right up across the pond areas and see those up close and personal. We are right in the meeting melting pot where the piney woods, forests, the big thicket, riparian corridors like forests along waterways and coastal prairies all came together. And so what we've been doing is using historical satellite imagery or aerial photographs along with documentation and research to see what it used to look like here and then apply conservation and restoration practices to bring that back. One is a fairly unique species of bird called the red-headed woodpecker. Those really like open old growth pine forests and their numbers had been declining here. We had noticed in the park for probably the last decade, but in recent years due to some conservation and restoration efforts that we've been doing out here and habitat improvement projects, we've noticed that those are really starting to come back and become much more common around the park. So that's been really neat to see. And then 
The other is there's a fairly uncommon species of prairie plant called rattlesnake master that is in the same family as yuccas and other more dry desert dwelling plants. And we've noticed a few of those that have been popping up in the park that we hadn't seen before. And that's in part to some other restoration work we've been doing. And so it's really neat to see things like that coming back into Jones Park. And another thing why I keep coming here is because of the snakes. Snakes are really pretty to me. The Nature Center has taxidermied species of animals found in the area, as well as live snakes on display. We also have our Burmese python that we showcase showing what happens when you have a pet snake <laughs> and the, the proper way to take care of a pet snake. I've been coming to this park for over 30 years. Ever since I was a kid, I've always loved our turtle pond. It's one of our permanent cypress ponds that we have out here and it's full of wildlife and it's a great opportunity for kids to really get to interact with wildlife because they can come out and we have turtle food available and they can go down and feed the turtles and the fish and they come right up and it really provides an up close and personal view of some of the wildlife. We usually fish together. It's just really fun catching fish. I like to study what the fish look like and look them up in books and stuff. There's actually probably over 30 different species of fish or maybe more that are found out in the creek. And in the wintertime uh, and early spring, white bass are the, the most prominent. We really get a lot of people that come out and want to try to catch those. We also have several different species of sunfish, two or three different species of gar and then some other less common species like carp or smallmouth buffalo people can catch out here throughout the year. The Rio de Santa Rosa was the original name of Spring Creek. The uh, Spanish and French explorers wrote about this high bluff that they saw and their interactions with the Native Americans in the area, which we now know were called the Akokisa Indians. The Akokisa lived here long before the, the colonists uh, came in from Europe and they lived here in uh, Cypress and Spring Creek areas during the fall and winter time. And uh, during the summers and spring, they would migrate down to the coast uh, along Spring Creek, which eventually makes its way to Galveston Bay. Living in two different places, you know, they have two different homes. Here in inland areas, they have the wiki up, which is the dome-shaped structure that's covered with palm fronds. And when they go down to the coast, they have the chiqui, which is an elevated structure. It's usually square, anywhere from 10 to 15, even 20 feet off the ground, depending on how bad the mosquitoes were. And they would build a small smudge fire beneath that. The smoke would then rise up and help to kind of disperse the mosquitoes. They would take rotten alligator fat and rub it all over their bodies. And this was their off. They somehow figured out that the gas coming off of the nasty alligator fat would <laughs> repel mosquitoes. The women would forage for berries, nuts, acorns. They also ate the uh, root of the greenbrier plant, which was very starchy, and uh, that was kind of their carbohydrates. And then they used deer, bear, uh, small game for their food. And the Akokisa were actually well known for tanning black bear skins. It was one of their best commodities for trading with the European colonists was uh, black bear skins as well as uh, they were master boat makers. They would make these huge long 20-foot canoes because they had to carry their whole family and everything with them as they migrated. The Akokisa Native Village, which is just behind our Redbud Hill homestead, um, has a replica sweat lodge, it has a replica chief's hut, the chiqui as well, and every year we have to maintain these structures and we do it all the traditional way using our native yopan boughs. We also use palm fronds to cover the surface just to complete the shelters and uh, it's all bound together using either sinew or small vines that we find here in the park. Our homestead represents the time period between the 1820s and 30s. So the homestead really comes to life during our annual events that take place up there when all of the costume reenactors are there showing the demonstrations of how life actually was in that time period. There we have cabin, which just kind of shows people the hard life that these people had to live and it also shows different trades that the pioneers would have, things like the blacksmith, uh, the woodworker, the farmer, and all of those would trade amongst themselves. We have four annual events focused out in the Homestead area. We have Homestead Heritage Day the second Saturday in February, Native American Heritage Day the second Saturday in September, 
our Pioneer Day the second Saturday in November and Old Fashioned Christmas the first Saturday in December. All of those just bring to light a different element of that time period. We have two other annual events that we have, Nature Fest, which is the first Saturday in March, and we also have Tricks and Treats Among the Trees, which is our Halloween event that happens the Saturday preceding Halloween. We have programs almost every Saturday on natural history and environmental related topics, anything from fishing to reptiles to wildflowers and landscaping with natives stargazing. We also offer canoeing and pontoon boat tours periodically and much, much more. Then we have summer nature camp during the summer that lasts through June and July for ages 5 to 12. The 10 to 12 year olds are the one that get to have the special day of canoeing and we actually take them through the safety and the training, the proper way to canoe so that they then finalize their day with a canoe trip. I like how the water, like when you're canoeing, it's just, it gives you good exercise, but it doesn't tire you out. Our volunteer program is very vital to the uh, smooth running of our programs. They help in every way possible at helping with our annual events, helping with our tours that we offer to the school children, and also supporting the programs financially. If you're interested in volunteering, we would love to have you. Just come by and stop by the Nature Center and talk with our staff. Call the Nature Center if you'd prefer, or check out our website and fill out an online application. I think that the whole park itself is a gem. That there's so many different opportunities here and so many different things for people to see and do and learn about that we just want to get more people to come out and see it the way we see it every day. It gives animals a place to live and they're not in your backyard. Um, it, uh, it gives uh, people to have fun, biking, hiking, fishing. Then they can come in, learn about nature, learn about the animals and plants, and then the park actually helps to keep people safe. Jones Park is in my heart. I think we have a wonderful place for people to visit. I enjoy being a part of something that is bettering our environment, preserving our environment for children to learn about nature and Texas history tied into one is just fantastic.